Silver and Skelos. As we've been telling you, former Assembly Speaker Shelley Silver and former Senate Majority Leader Dean Skelos are each on trial for corruption, both trials happening right across from one another, if you will, in lower Manhattan. Now, the Silver trial is taking a break today. That after the prosecution wrapped up its case yesterday, closing arguments already scheduled for this coming Monday, and the jury could get the case as early as Monday, if not Tuesday. And in the Skelos trial, the jury just heard wiretap phone conversations between Skelos, the father, and the son, Adam. Now, they're focused on a company named Abtech Industries that's hired, that hired the son, Adam, as a, quote, government relations specialist. Now, prosecutors say Abtech paid him 10 grand a month and in return got access. Abtech stood to make a fortune on fracking as it makes filters used during that drilling process. So on the day that Governor Cuomo effectively banned it in New York State, Skelos, as you would imagine, was none too happy. In one of the tapped calls, Adam told his father, ah, this day sucks. Well, Adam also accused Cuomo of flip-flopping, and he's caught on tape calling the governor, well, let's just say a female body part um, that I'm not allowed to say on TV, as this is a family program. Then it was Dad's turn to chime in about the governor, telling Adam the following. I'm going to run against him. This is stupid. Everybody, everything is the polls. No more, you know, buddy, buddy, and all that stuff. He's full of, use your imagination. All right, let's go live to Dominic Carter, live in lower Manhattan, who's covering both trials. And uh, Dominic, uh, I'm sure um, you didn't have a sleepy day listening to some of the testimony at the Skelos trial. Well, you hit it on the head, Richard. All we can say is, wow, with the day that Dean Skelos has had today, perhaps the weekend can't get here fast enough. But federal judge Kimber Wood has just announced, Richard, there will indeed be court tomorrow. We will be here on Friday. Sometimes federal court is not in session on Fridays, but that will not be the case tomorrow. We will be here. Now, federal prosecutors are hammering away at Dean Skelos and his son. There was one witness, one witness, only one witness on the stand today, all day long, and prosecutors allege, Richard, that the company in question, that Skelos pushed for employment for his son so much, the company in question cut Adam Skelos a $20,000 check described as a title fee payment. Right out the gate, after becoming majority leader of the state Senate in 2010, prosecutors allege Dean Skelos was pushing for a job for his son. A key prosecution witness was on the stand, Charles Dorego, general counsel for Glenwood Management. He testified Skelos first made the request about employment for his son at a December 20th, 2010 meeting in billionaire owner Leonard Litwin's private Long Island office, where Skelos was expected to offer thanks to Glenwood's financial support of the GOP and celebrate their renewed Senate control. It was an uncomfortable situation, Durego testified, and that afterwards Litwin was concerned and told him to do nothing in hopes the request would go away. But Adam Skello soon pushed for business in areas where he reportedly had very little experience. But it is still the wiretaps from yesterday that may do damage. In this exchange, Adam Skelos is not happy his father is sharing leadership with Senator Jeff Klein of the Bronx. I heard you left a handprint on someone's today. You, you what? I heard you left a handprint on somebody's <laughs> uh, How'd it go? We're gonna, I'm going to be the president, the majority leader. And then we're both going to be co-coalition leaders. Why would you do that, Adam? Because I have to think about the next election. That's why. Yeah, okay. And the next election, he's going to say, go F yourself. Meanwhile, at the Silver trial last night, as the government wrapped up nearly three weeks of testimony, this was next. It was expected, with little surprise, the former assembly speaker told the court, I do not wish to testify. Silver spoke to us outside. Take me through your thought process. The prosecution has rested. 
Yes, and the defense uh, will present its case, and I'm confident I'll be vindicated. So there will definitely be a case on terms of your counsel? There will be a, a defense case submitted, yes. Monday, the trial will be turned over to Silver's defense team, which told the court that it was not planning on calling any witnesses and will instead present documents as evidence. Richard, on the Silver trial, as you said at the top of the show, what's going to happen come Monday, the uh, jury will return. They uh, will listen to closing arguments. Hard to believe, closing arguments in the Silver trial are set for Monday. By Monday afternoon, this will take about two hours. The judge is going to charge the jury. That is extremely important. It can decide whether one walks or whether they're convicted. As she defines the parameters of the law. She has already said numerous times that this is a circumstantial evidence type case that they must get, that is the jury, in the head of the speaker. And that is tough to do. By Tuesday morning, this case should, it should conceivably go to the jury. By Tuesday afternoon, they will have it. And also conceivably, before Thanksgiving, Richard, hard to believe, it, it's not sure, but there's a possibility that the verdict in the silver case could come down, possible, before Thanksgiving. That is it for now. From Lower Manhattan, I'm Dominic Carter. Richard, let's go back to you. Good enough, Dominic. Thank you very much. And I want to bring in our panel. We're joined by Richard Brodsky, a former Democratic New York State Assembly, now a senior fellow at Demos, as well as professor at NYU. Richard St. Paul, Republican strategist and a former vice chair for the National Black Republican Association. And Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. Um, for logical reasons, um, Silver folks aren't going to, A, put him, uh, Shelley, on the stand, or, for that matter, really bring up any other witnesses. I think they're going to put a perfunctory defense on. They're going to basically say prosecution didn't prove their case. They're going to they're going to put in documents, and those documents will have whatever weight you can give them. The, 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 this is an interesting trial from a lawyer's technical point of view. The heart of the exchange, did was there a quid pro quo? There you have the witnesses who supposedly gave it, saying there weren't any. On the other hand, you have this mass of damning circumstantial evidence, which is not inclined to make the jury sympathetic to Shelley. The, the, the prosecution is really asking the, the jury to look past the key witnesses yep. into the surrounding atmosphere. Hard to know how it would come out. It does, but my question is, from what we've seen um, and heard from the testimony that's happened, I think you described it fairly. Um, both uh, Dr. Taub um, talking about the mesothelioma cases and about the relationship and the email threads where he certainly paints a picture which said, hey, I kind of understood how this relationship worked here and how I knew I wasn't supposed to do something that's going to basically make Shelley Silver an enemy mean for all the logical reasons. But then when stated directly, did he tell you there was a condition here to get the referrals or else uh, X? He said no. It was On the flip side, though, on the real estate portions of this, it seems to me that that's where some of the more damning testimony came from. Again, not a hard quid pro quo, but it seemed to say that's where there might have been even more abuse. Without of summing office. up for either side, the problem is that the meeting in June of 11 that had the most contentious or damaging testimony occurred before they knew of the arrangement. In other words, that yeah. didn't come until December. So those are lawyers' defenses. A jury is either going to take those lawyers' defenses seriously, in which case Shelley has a reasonable shot at being acquitted, or they're going to look past that and say this whole thing stinks, in which case he has a reasonable chance of being convicted. You're an attorney, too. Yes. Um, and let's talk about the 12 people in that box, okay? They come in um, with a presupposition that Albany stinks, right? Um, and let's give Bahara some credit. Well, I would have expected more damning evidence that was presented, not as much circumstantial to this point. Nonetheless, he's got a pretty good record when it comes to these things, certainly as it relates to corruption cases. Yeah. Is it enough to paint a picture that this guy enriched himself really handsomely, speaking of Shelley Silver? And by the way, there's some taxpayer money involved here in the process, and he certainly used his office, at least on the appearance of it, right, to certainly benefit himself here. 
um, and giving the impression to some of the folks that he dealt with, we better go along to get along because you don't want to tick off Shelly Silver because it could come back to Hertz. Mm -hmm. What's your sense? You know, I've heard different schools of thought on this, Richard, which is they might not like him, but you know what, at the end of the day, they need hard evidence, and if the judge charges him the way that she might, um, it's going to be tough, you know, to walk away from this. I heard conversely, they may not convict him on the harder, uh, on the worst uh, charges that he's facing, but maybe on some of the lesser charges, uh, he could be looking at convictions. In fact, most people I talk to be surprised if he walks away scot-free. What do you think? Look, first of all, the jury is going to be one, and it's supposed to has told the judge and the attorneys on both sides that they can be fair and impartial. So whatever they think about Albany. They're not supposed to be thinking while they're in that courtroom, listening to evidence. Okay, I've heard the disclaimer. To, okay, that's right. They're still 12 human beings, all right? <laughs> they are, and so they're going to listen to the evidence. Here's what's taking place here. You have the defense basically saying, Shelley's a great guy. Everybody that's testified for the prosecution are basically his friends. And the defense is going up and saying, aren't you his friend? Don't you have a friendship? Yeah, and so everything that uh, Simon Silver did was because of their friendship and not because it was a quid pro quo. But things don't make sense. For example, when you're investing, when Sally asks somebody to invest money uh, and then say, give me the, give the $300,000 to my wife so I don't have to claim those on my uh, ethics form. You know, so that starts to, you know, you start to lose credibility and starts to smell bad and says, you know what? I don't think this guy is as credible as, as we think he is. He's definitely, you know, dirty dealing. And, you know, we can, under the circumstantial evidence, we can believe that it was a quid pro quo. It wasn't about friendship. Even if there's no evidence of an exchange. There is evidence of an exchange. What's the evidence? The evidence is very simple. That, for example, the, mis the uh, cancer clinic, once I, stopped fun once I stopped giving public money to the cancer clinic, then I stopped sending cases to your law firm. Well, that's not the evidence, though. I, I, that that it, is. It, it's circumstantial. The, but that's good enough evidence. The, 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 thank God you're not on the jury. <laughs> um, I, I'm not saying Shelley is innocent. I don't know. And I don't know because you got to look at the eyes of the witnesses. But I do know that where it was expected, that there would be somebody say, yeah, I gave him the money because I needed his help. And he made it clear that that's how I got his help. Mm -hmm. That evidence never but appeared. Yes, but the implication from the, the beginning of Taub's testimony was that was the, the relationship. And they played the emails that he was talking to some of his colleagues about. The presumption about. of innocence mm -hmm. is on Shelley's side. Look, I, I know I, the I guy, hear you. I hear you. and I'm in a bizarre way, personally, rooting for him. If he did what he's accused of doing, I'm not rooting for him. But without knowing it, I kind of, you know. Okay, well, then we get to the Skelos trial, Andrew, and there's less, I mean, we played, actually, Juicy. we play a lot, uh, <laughs> some of the stuff, yes. <laughs> but, I mean, if, if you want to talk about both delusional <laughs> and then also shady, and I find myself in a perverse way feeling a little sad for the dad, to have to keep cleaning up the kid's messes here yeah. and the kid keep digging and digging a, deep, a digger ditch for his father who still shouldn't have done what he did and putting the kid where he did and also do and at least as the allegations and certainly the the you know the phone taps don't seem to, to help the skeletons out in any way um what a bizarre yeah the stuff that we heard on the on the wiretap i i feel badly for for skelos for dean also it it there was just sort of the you know, collegial, com the, the conversation he was having with his son, is, some of it was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to run against Cuomo, sure. Like, I don't, I don't even think he believed it. It was just fa father and son relationship. But they're also co-defendants in this whole thing. And yeah. so it, it gets, look, and, we, we, and we got, hear the most perverse question that the, there was a plea that one of the skeletons, and we had believe it to be the son, went to the feds looking for a plea deal. Now, imagine the terms of that. Like, what, would he have the nerve to flip on the old man? I don't know that to be the case, but do you imagine after everything his dad did for him that this guy would would actually turn states on his on his old man? You know, but but it's also the the father wants the, what's best for the son if he can keep the son out of prison. It's I, I want to hear the Republican on this one. <laughs> Look, this it, isn't really Republican Democrat. No, this oh, is yeah. this is, all this, this is yeah. right. I mean, he's he's hoping that criminals, uh, you know, are, no. aren't indicted. Thank God you're not on the jury. <laughs> aren't, aren't convicted. I mean, but you know, listen. At the end of the day, we we've seen this before. A spotter, father son combination go to jail. A libis father son combination go to jail. And now you have uh, Skelos as a father son combination. So what you you know the sins that was the sins I'm paying for the sins of my father or, or however it goes. And this way it's the other way around. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. But this is but th I think the evidence is definitely more direct. 
yes. to your point, in, in this case, than it is in the, in the civil I guess, though, it's just weirdly more understandable why, why Skelos would do what he's accused of doing as opposed to Silver doing what he's accused of doing. But anyway, isn't there a little part of this that feels like a Soprano episode with no-show jobs <laughs> and him threatening to, well. hey, you know, I'll tell my father. You know, it's, it's, it's like a badly written uh, yeah. script here. Uh, but uh, The thing that, of all the bizarre things in that case, it was that they had bought what are called burner phones. That are phones that you <laughs> Again, use. It's a okay. And and okay, you're gonna yeah. and then they get on the regular phones <laughs> and say, you know, we really should be talking about this on the burner phones. Yeah? This is the worst part for the indictment of I, Albany. I, I, that they don't even know, you know phones I never <laughs> thought of stupidity as a fel felony before. <laughs> we, but geez Louise. We, I mean, should, we should get an acting troop in here to reenact oh, all, God. The, all the phone calls. That, With yeah. bleeps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. And, and again here. Um, you're not going to have trial tomorrow on the silver uh, case. Uh, it's going to basically have a closing argument. It's going to be happening on Monday, uh, and then we'll see very shortly thereafter the jury will get the case. Skelos, there will be the trial tomorrow. Okay, coming up next, though, we come back to our top story, the Paris terror attack. Washington trying to figure out how to handle Syrian refugees. Far right, they want to keep them out here. President wants to let them in with proper screening. It's all coming to a head today on Capitol Hill and in the White House. We'll catch up on it.